Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, for nerds, by nerds, hanging out with this nerd, Nerdarchy's Ted. We're going to give you three ways to up your immersion in your Dungeons and Dragons game. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So we have a video suggestion from the Dungeon Maestro, and what he wants to know is, you know, what, what are some ways to be more descriptive and... and in his descriptions, essentially, right? So his style is he does a lot of improv DMing. You know, he has, like, bullet point stuff here and there. But he feels like maybe sometimes he's missing something. He's not being descriptive enough. Well, I am I run a very similar style. I do a lot lot more improv than I do with, with planning. I do try to plan, like, all right, what possibly are they going to fight tonight? Where do I think they're going to go? And then I just kind of run with it. Uh, the, the trick is to really engage the senses. And I, I feel like you, sometimes you want to go beyond what is the norm. Think about what are they smelling. If, if they're in a swamp or if they're at a, at a, you know, a recent battle, like what taste is in their mouth? You know, what, what kind of smells, what kind of things are going to be affecting them that they might not be thinking about? And you'll find the times that that's going to really pull them in more than, okay, this is what you see. Yeah, you might want, if you're using a DM screen, which I suggest that you do, you may want to just put some post-its on your DM screen and they might say sight, smell, taste, you know, audio. And there is nothing wrong with before something is about to happen. As the DM, of you can just kind of take a moment for yourself, take a deep breath, maybe even close your eyes and visualize the scene a little bit. I don't think any player is ever going to really say anything or care, especially if when you open your eyes and the shit that comes out of your mouth blows them away. It, you know, th there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and it might just be taking, you know, just taking that slight breather, like one deep breath and just, you know, visualize the scene and then tell them what they're saying. I think is the, as DMs, a lot of times we will, we'll talk before we think, mm -hmm. right. And instead you want to fill the signs, you want to keep things moving, uh, you know, you feel it's your job to, to keep the flow of the game going. And as as people, oftentimes, you know, we fear that silence, but the pa there's nothing wrong with the pause. As video creators, we totally get it, and, and we make that mistake all the time where we're a bit just better off. Sometimes you're just better off shutting up for a minute and letting yourself think. Right, and and that's and that's the key. So if you take that moment and you say, okay, all right, what what are these five senses? What are they going? What are they going to see, think, feel? However, like go into those and focus on a different one at different times. And when when you're all right, you're in the you're in the underground. You're uh, you know in the beneath as we call it or the underdark. Like all right, talk about how little they can see, even if you've got. A decent light source you're still not seeing as far as you normally would when you're above ground literally you can you can see miles if, you, if you've got decent decent height on the surface here you're talking what maybe 120 feet if you've got a really good light source well and not only that too like one of the other differences is you know if you're talking about like the underdark anyway um tunnels twist and turn you know, so like even if the, there was enough light, there's a eventually this your sight is going to be cut off by you know by by obstruction. Right, and I was I was going to get there, but you know you've got typically unless there's something that's that's out of the ordinary, you're going to be dealing with boring gray stone. Yeah, you talk to dwarves and they might say something different about it, but the stone itself might not change for miles on end. So other than the, the cutting or the tunneling, there's, there's nothing different to look at. Focus on how, how dull and monotonous that can wind up being. When a sound does happen, think about how much it's going to echo and reverberate around as, because it's, it's so, so full. You know, you're, you're dealing with such a small area that's going to bounce off all the walls and travel further. Whereas when you're out in the open, 
it goes in all directions and can you know, disappear pretty easily. So you might want to think about the environment and Ted kind of just made me think of that and he kind of touched on it a little bit, but think about the environment and go, oh, well, in, like in his example, you're in the underground, so your sight is very limited. So you could go you know, kind of like focus on the lack of sight or you could kind of ignore sight altogether and just focus on the other senses uh, because, because you can't really see that far and it's going to be it's going to be, uh, I don't want to say unimportant, but uh, uninteresting at least, right? Your your hearing is going to be much more useful to you. Yeah, so you might want to focus on hearing and smells and, and that kind of things. And, and, and also, um, when you go to visual, go go more with texture and tactileness of the visual instead because you're in close and that's what you're saying. You know, we hear that, you know, the passageways are smooth as if it's been worn down by water over the past eons or perhaps it's rough or the ground is craggly, you know, and uneven and, you know, things like that you could, you could focus on. So, so you're, you're kind of, in some ways you're addressing the sense of touch through your sight or through, you know, how you feel when you're walking, you know, that the sloping of up or down of, of the tunnel or, you know, maybe the tunnel's rounded. So you have to walk weird and it's a little bit uncomfortable because your feet are kind of on an angle and they're not even. So that would be something as well. And you could do that same thing for, you know, different places, you know, depending uh, where where they are. You know, if they're in the plains, you might want to... You, or, or like uh, grasslands, you might you may want to focus on things like how the wind is blowing and how all the grass is leaning to the left, or yeah, you know, the tall grass is leaning to the left, or something like that, or how it feels as you're walking through it and it crests your what flesh is exposed, you know, different things like that. But as far as like the cues, you know, that's where post-its come in handy. Like if you know the general read, like you you might want to go. Uh, certain areas where maybe you're not going to like do a description for everything because you're improv but maybe you want to write down some descriptive things for particular areas. Like if it's a dungeon, well, here's like the generic dungeon feature that they're going to be dealing with over and over again. And that can be useful too, because if they go, go someplace where it changes, you, you ha you'll have that cue going, all right, well, this is what I've been describing, but now it's different. Mm -hmm. So may maybe you'll, you'll take that moment and explain and um, describe how it's different. You know the the gray the gray stone walls that you've been you've been seeing that are uninteresting suddenly give way as you enter the room. You're you're now in some kind of temple that is made of, of pure white marble, and you can't see any seam lines. So it it begs the question: Was this created magically, or you know did somebody actually find a massive chunk of marble and carve this room out of it? That's just that's where you know that's where I was going with. Um, you know, you you can go in a in another direction. You know, as you were talking about the different environments, you know, we're we're talking about adventuring parties. We're talking about people who tend to spend a, a long amount of time outside of town, where you're frequently going to be forging and foraging and hunting for what you're going to eat. So you can get your taste sense into it in another way by, okay, well, the last several days you've been traveling underground, so you've been forced to eat, like, rock grubs and that kind of stuff, and it's really beginning to get to the more sensitive palate of the elf over here, you know, H however you want to, you know, go into it. But that that's going to draw people in and, and make a change to their environment. Sometimes people are like, all right, well, then we need to get out of here quickly because I'm not really digging this uh, this fair. Dungeon Maestro is already using, you know, ambience in, in, in his game. So, like, that's another thing. Maybe, you know, maybe by picking um, his music beforehand that goes with whatever the scene is going to be, that'll help him flesh out in his mind the description that he wants to use. You know, really taking those sounds and... and put words to them mm -hmm. to, to help build it you know that that is you know another way you know that the basically the ambience of the gaming table then you could also use props right so there, there's candles out there by the, the company called dungeon sense that you can literally light and 
you know, have that off to the side and, you know, the players will, will you know, be smelling, you know, this or smelling that, that are really going to draw them in because, all right, now you've got this, this music playing in the background. You've got this sense that, that's filling the air. All right, now I really, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm there because two of my senses are already engaged before the DM is, you know, really getting into the thick of his description. Yeah, even talking. So that we should set the tone and the ambiance for the, for it. And the next thing would be props. Like if finding things that are relevant to whatever whatever scenes coming up. You know, if if you have encounters planned and uh, you know, maybe it might even be something that you can hand out to your players that they can touch it. So to kind of get get the feel for it, whether it's a scroll uh, or a map. Or, you know, or whatever, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you have an actual shield, you know, with a crest on it that you can put out and they can actually see it and touch it. And, and you know, while, while they're doing that, you know, if they make any commentary on any of those props that you use, you can then use that to also trigger descriptions that could feed back into what you what what you're describing in the scene. And what that does is when you reinforce that, you're just reinforcing what they just said, which always, you know, will draw a stronger connection for, uh, from a person to what it, to the scene. So you've got props, you've got ambience, you know, ambiance, and you've got, you know, post-its or reminders that you can, you can have there set ready to go with, you know, your, your typical prep stuff. Is there any other things that you use in your game to get players in the move or deal with uh with improv there's a great spot for that and that's down in the comments below while you're down there don't forget to like share and subscribe can hang out with us over on facebook so until next time stay, stay nerdy, nerdy.